Please be seated. Lovely to have you here today. Do you have a roof over your head, Melba? I didn't notice the tent out the back, so we should be okay. <laughs> Uh, we are somewhere to live? No, no, no. Oh, we're somewhere destitute, are we? No, just there, Down the road? Granny flat? Yes, we're still praying. We're still looking. <laughs> still looking for something more permanent. Yes, yes. But we found somewhere to live, that's good. Val, we I want to pray for your sister. Do you want to give a very quick snapshot? What's her name? Margaret. Margaret. Um, Last year, my sister had bariatric surgery, which was just a fancy amount of having her stomach half cut away. And so now her tummy, her stomach is only this big. And she was on lots and lots of medication, and so what's happened is her body is rejecting food all the way, and she's taking half her tablets in the morning and half at night because she can't take them. It fills her stomach too full if she takes them all in one go. So she has one meal a day, which is lunch, because the other two meals are taking the meals. So she's now lost 46 kilos since the beginning of October last year, which is a wonderful thing, because she's a very, very big girl. But the problem is that for years she's been complaining of pain, and they kept saying, it's your rheumatoid arthritis, it's your rheumatoid arthritis. But just in this last week, they found that it's not just her rheumatoid arthritis, She's got two blockages, two small blockages in her heart. So she's undergone an angiogram this week. She's also had uh, ultrasounds and MRIs. There's a problem with her liver. It's not cleansing her body as it should. And they found a very big ulcer which could erupt at any time. And there's two small ones. So there's... And What's going on? <laughs> we're yeah. we're going to pray for Margaret. Please. <laughs> we're going to do that. Father God, we just lift up Margaret before you, Lord God, and you know the journey uh, that she's been on, uh, the, to restore some health and to get back a bit of normality of life, but Father God, there's these things that now have been creeping in and all the pills she has to take and blockages, and Father God, we just pray for your hand of healing, we pray wisdom for doctors and surgeons and specialists, Lord God, that she can get the best outcome. We pray for good health, we pray for these blockages to be removed, Lord God, and, and we stand with them. Thou today and others who have been praying for her sister Margaret, Lord, and we just lift her up today, Lord. May she know your healing, may she know your comfort, may she know your peace. And all the other things, Lord, that we need to pray for or think about, we, we thank you, Lord God, that you indeed are at work. And we take some time now to open your word, Lord God, and be encouraged uh, from your word, Lord, and take my words and my thoughts, may they be yours, in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to pray and do that, so that will be good. So, morning. Morning. <laughs> Simple little title, get up. Well, you can in, in about well, 20 minutes and, and have a cup of it. Yeah, so. When we walk in obedience, that creates freedom for us to take a step of faith. Even when we cannot see where it's heading, we need to get up and move. This morning we're going to look at a, a, a short story in the life of Peter. It's Acts chapter 12. We'll be in that uh, <coughs> this morning. Peter's in prison. Acts 5, Acts 12, 5 to 9. For some of us have sat for too long. Remember that. Reading Acts 12, 5. So Peter was kept in prison. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, who loves us suddenly? Anyone? Amen. An angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up and quickly said to him, Quick, get up! He said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but had no idea 
that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. If he doesn't get up, if he stays where he is, the chains may not have fallen off. Friends, God already had intended to take those chains off and to set Peter free. He quickly got up and the chains fell off. We need to move. We need to act. We need to see what God is doing. We need to be people of obedience. We need to be people of faith to act and see what God has planned. Too many of us wait for that perfect situation. Oh, then I'll follow God. Oh, then I'll do what He's calling me to do. We wait for that perfect job. We wait for that perfect situation. We wait for a certain amount of money in the bank. Oh, then I'll be faithful. Maybe God wants us to move now so He can do His miracle and His rescue and bless us now. He who is faithful with a little. Now there is no indication in this text that Peter thought that he was going to be set free. That some miraculous thing would happen. There he is chained up. There's two soldiers beside him. It's locked. It's a prison. But God had a different plan. He's just going through the motions. And sometimes that's all you can do. Just go through the motions. Some of us would still be in prison because we wanted to know all the details before we faithfully followed. Some of us would have had too many questions just to get up when that angel tapped us on the shoulder. Hopefully that wouldn't be too hard to do. We come with our why. We come with our what. When God wants to see you walk in obedience and faith. You may never get the answer to your why, to your what, but that's okay. I believe the old Peter would have had many questions. What's happening? Where are we going? Excuse me, who are you? So in Acts 12, 7 to 8, an angel, an angel's there, he struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. At this point, Peter had no idea where he was going. He just gets up. Faith is getting dressed, even when you don't know where you are going. No details, just obedience. I hope this is from God. I'm taking a step. I'm getting up. I'm ready. I'm moving. God is leading. God is directing. God is setting me free. Peter faithfully follows. Friends, faithfully follow. Follow the God of grace. Follow the God of mercy. Follow the God of hope and salvation here today. Cooperate with God. Be in harmony with Him. When He knocks, we'll know. Don't lose your way. Hear His voice. Hear the voice of the Good Shepherd that says, Come, come friend, follow me. All Peter needed to do was the next thing. All we have to do is the next thing. We don't have to be Peter. We don't have to be some important apostle trapped in prison. We just need to faithfully follow daily. Maybe it's a struggle to get up every morning. There's many prisons, isn't there? Addiction is a prison. Depression is a prison. Mindsets are a prison. Trauma can be a prison. Your past can be a prison. Illness can be a prison. You cannot predict the path of freedom 
but you can respond to God's presence. And the next thing you know you need to do, you can respond and accept the help that is available to you as we let his light of hope and faith shine on us. Peter's not sure what's going on. Peter's not sure if this is a dream or a vision or, or if this is really happening. But he listens, he acts, and he follows. Verse 9 up there for you. Peter followed him out of the prison, but had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. He had no idea. Most of the time, we don't even realize that that was God till after the fact, do we? When you're in it, you might feel it's confusing, uncertain, but you're faithfully following. It's only after you've been through it, Romans 8, 28, up there for you, and we know that in all things, God works for the good who, of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purposes. It's only then that it makes sense. It's hard to see. It's hard to follow. But we're faithfully doing it. Going through the motions. Taking a step. Peter is following and obeying and doing the next practical thing. Don't make your Christian walk so complicated. Don't make your Christian walk so hard for yourself and others. <coughs> and so, friends, they continue out. Acts 12, 10 and 11. He's faithfully following. They passed the first and second guards and came to an iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself, came to his senses, and said, Hey, now, now I know, without a doubt, that this was the Lord. But he sent an angel to rescue me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. He's out. He's set free. God will do what you cannot do for yourself. He will make a way and open a door and loosen those chains and get you out of your prison, whatever that may be. If you are willing to walk in faith and walk in obedience and seek some help and go through the motions and do what you know you need to do. You may have limited resources. You may have limited information. But you're working with what you've got. Peter walks through the gate. You have to go through it. We must go through it. Because freedom, safety is up ahead. The angel did his part. And Peter did his part as well. When you go through it, that is the proof that you trust him. Even when you're in the middle of it. So many people get stuck at a door, still knocking. Gripped with fear, gripped with uncertainty, still knocking. God rescued Peter. And he'll be there for me. He'll be there for you. He'll be there for whatever situation that is. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I'm trusting God with the details. Be ready to get up. Be ready to move. Look for those open doors of opportunity. Now Peter comes to this moment. The angel's gone. And Peter thinks to himself, well, I've got to go. I've got to go somewhere. I wonder what door Peter is going to knock on. As he walks down this street, set free from prison, miraculously, still coming to terms with all that. It's so important that we knock on the right door when we are in trouble. 
I'm sure we can all think of times when we knocked on wrong doors. But listen for a minute. So many of us run back to those same old doors of disappointment that have disappointed us before and we knock on them hoping that there will be something different inside but there is not. Hoping there will be something different inside but there won't be. Praise God, Peter knew where to go and where to knock. He knew about John Mark's mother, about the house there. Apparently they've been praying and, and all he needed to do was to knock on that door. Well, this morning, friends, you've knocked on the right door and you've come on into the right place today. Peter said, I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel to rescue me. I was in prison and, and God has set me free. And in verse 12 of Acts 12, when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Hey, they're praying for Peter. They're praying about the situation. And their answer, friends, is knocking at the door. Their answer, friends, is behind the door, knocking. Their prayer meeting is disrupted. And in Acts 12, 16, but our good friend Peter kept on knocking. And sometimes, friends, you'll have to keep on knocking. Waiting for that door to open. Waiting for the right moment. Waiting for the right time. And when that door opens, step on through. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Me as well. We could form a line, couldn't we? Astonished. Peter motioned with his hands for them to be quiet and he described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Never think that God is not listening to our prayers. Never think that he has forgotten you. Never get stuck in a place where you think that God cannot do something. Because he can and he will and he does. Hey, Peter's here! At the door. We were just praying. And God has set you free. Be ready. Get up. And have faith to believe he can open the prison gate and shine his light of hope. In. Shine his light of hope and healing into your situation. He can set you free. Knock. 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 Friends, the answer is behind the door. God bless you. Amen.